Oh, hey. Um, I've been thinking since the start of my journey about my existence. Um, I know I'm doomed to play the most difficult games of all time, but how would I know a difficult video game? Which is why I need to be prepared. I need to know what classifies as a video game. And this is... Fire Emblem? Video games all come in different shapes and forms, each having its unique flavor and direction compared to other genres. And one of the things that make each video game unique is its difficulty. There are so many games that struggle to find that perfect balance between easy, challenging, and frustrating. Difficulty can be easily summed up with the addition of increased enemy health and damage, more intricate puzzles, exploits, and this. There are a ton of variables involved with difficulty, so much so that I can talk about them for about 9 minutes, so let's tone it down a bit, maybe on recruit mode. Most video games have difficulty sliders, which lets players choose how they want to approach the game and what the players would benefit from them. Usually, higher difficulties simply give enemies more health and damage, which can make the gameplay a bit repetitive. When the difficulty is this artificial, it really downgrades your achievements. So this is probably the most important decision to make, especially when doing a first playthrough. How would I know which difficulty is the best, which is more fun? Obviously, the normal difficulty is the easy pick, but that's not usually the case. Playing any first-person shooter game or any game in general, the normal difficulty is just a walk in the park, which makes it barely indistinguishable from the easy mode. That's why every game with a difficulty slider should have that one difficulty setting that makes the game feel how it should play, how everything will be balanced. One example of this is Halo 3, which tells you that the heroic difficulty is how the game is meant to be experienced. Of course, this doesn't matter in Halo 2 because no matter what difficulty you choose, you're gonna get your cheeks clapped. Either that's just the game itself or a skill issue. The problem with difficulty sliders is that Sometimes there's this gap between this is fine and death. You want the game to push you to your potential, and if there's this one thing, this one part or variable that you can't overcome no matter what you do, it sucks the fun out of the game. But that's the thing, you want to feel defeat to progress. That's usually the solution to being the most difficult games. You notice the errors in the game's design, you abuse the system, and when you finish the game that took you your entire life to beat, either the end may be satisfying or your enjoyment is ruined. You don't want this static point in the game where you don't feel like you can't get any better or there's no way or room for you to progress any further. Dark Souls, Zelda, Fucking Ninja Gaiden, these games all have one fixed difficulty, meaning no difficulty sliders or settings. When playing these kinds of games, everything that you do and how you play incredibly affects the experience in the long run. It's the way a game is meant to be played. Now, of course, having one fixed difficulty doesn't always result in a perfectly fine game, but there should be at least one variable in the game that makes up for it. Take Dark Souls 3, getting your ass kicked by a boss, well you can XP farm to make your character stronger and maybe even farm to get this one broken weapon that can kill the boss in an instant. This doesn't mean difficulty sliders don't belong in the video game or that games that have one fixed difficulty aren't perfect or good at least. Everyone should have options in how they want to play a game, but sometimes it might be a bit too much. Having customizable settings to make a personalized difficulty is cool and all, but it would have to go through a ton of trial and errors in order to have the perfect difficulty. You don't know how changing this and that setting can affect the gameplay in the long run. Especially in the first playthrough, you might not even know what this setting means. This is weird. It is challenging to make a single difficulty that's perfect for all players and how it makes the game feel like it should be. It all just boils down to personal preference. But what about games that are easy to play and pick up, but difficult to master? Usually these games are platformers. I mean, look at Super Mario Odyssey. Not the hardest game ever made. It is quite simple and easy, but people go nuts with this game. So many little things impact the whole game. You see speedrunners perform the most cryptic tricks just to spend even a millisecond less time than their previous records. And this doesn't only apply to platformers. 
This can be done to most, maybe every, video game ever. This also applies to which era of gaming a game belongs to. In the mid 80s to early 90s, the Nintendo Entertainment System became a turning point for video games. Games start to have a set amount of levels and stages, and with this change, difficulty is transformed. Before the NES, every arcade title was full of endless games designed to kill you fast and take your quarters. Pac-Man, for example, is just one repeating level. Now you might think, oh, it's just one level, how is this difficult? This is one reason this is a survival horror game. Now the challenge to making games for the NES at the time was, how do we turn a 10 minute game into something that will take an average of 3 hours of playtime to beat? Well, the answer is, be Ninja Gaiden. Cheap one-shot kills, broken enemy spawns, near to impossible jumps, confusing puzzles, enemies that knock you up a ledge, and glitchy as hell gameplay. I have more sleep than I have beaten NES games, which is funny because I only have a minute's worth of sleep a day. Even games that were specifically aimed at kids make Sekiro look like subway surfers compared to Super Mario Bros. 3. The thing about old video games is that the difficulty mostly comes from poor game design. Now, this doesn't mean they're all terrible and unplayable and you shouldn't play them, well maybe except that, but they're so buggy. The controls are sometimes unresponsive at times, and the game itself might even glitch or crash sometimes. Ideally, a game should get progressively challenging as you play, regardless of the genre. But for some genres, it isn't consistent. Again, in Halo 3, the mission Floodgate brings back the Flood, the most challenging enemy in the entirety of the Halo franchise. And the next mission gives you a sniper rifle, one of the most powerful weapons in the game. I'm not saying the difficulty has to get more challenging as you play progressively, but the game can make reasons as to why the progressive difficulty in the game isn't consistent. Whether it's for the narrative or introducing a new in-game feature, it can be okay to not be consistent. And then there are the Kirby games. For games that do have progressive difficulty, it is vital to have checkpoints in the game. Looking back at NES titles like Castlevania and how many times did I mention you today? When you lose all your lives, you get kicked right back to the main tile screen and restart the whole game. Without checkpoints, players are forced to replay huge chunks of a video game, making it even more irritating and the replay value would go down dramatically. The iconic bonfires of Dark Souls and the like give the player a moment of relaxation from having to suffer PTSD and it ignites a spark of hope in a game whose world is gloomy and depressing. Now what about online games? Do they classify as being difficult? For me, no. You're facing against another player and the challenges you face there come from the opposing player and not the game itself. It's like chess, the game isn't hard, you just suck. So you have to keep up with the latest builds and stuff in order to be better than your opponents. Games like Call of Duty and Overwatch lower the bar mainly because you have your teammates to carry you. And if you lose, well, you can just blame them and if you're the guy that got killed in the final kill cam, delete the game. You deserve better. So the thing about difficult games is that they grow on you. The more you fail and the more you try, the more you get better at the game. It all comes down to the phrase, get good. But what makes difficult games good? Is it the challenge? Is it the artistry? Personally, I think it's the progress, the journey rather than the destination. Like I said earlier, the more you play, the more you get better, and this applies to everything else in life. You have to lose in order to win. The thing is, behind every loss, one win is satisfaction enough. That's what I felt after just having beaten Dark Souls 3. Of course I had to look up some things online, but mostly the challenge comes from your experience. No matter what weapon or armor you use, the true key to victory is your skill and knowledge of the game. It doesn't matter how many retries it took you to beat this one thing at a game, you only have to win once and from then on you can progress. That's the beauty of difficult video games.